YouTubers, this is Joe Drums coming to you. Boy, it's been a long time since I've done a video that actually has me in it. Uh, sorry for that delay, but I was waiting to uh, get the Neil Peart set done, uh, which you can see it's completed now. I'm still waiting on one more piece, which is the uh, the bell tree, and that's on its way. So as soon as I have that, pretty much this is the way the set's going to be. Um, talking about the, the Neil Peart kit, this is the kit that he had from the, the 1980s. Um, late 70s, early 80s, you know, this is around the moving pictures era. And a buddy of mine who is the guitar player for my tribute band, Brian, uh, who plays for the, uh, the band, he's a guitarist that does the Alex Lifeson in our uh, tribute band called Gold Rush. And Brian was the one that got these drums for me. Um, as you'll see in some of the pictures I'm going to show you here, uh, the drum set that he has at his house is the actual sizes. Everything's pretty much to the T of the way Neil had it back in the day. Um, of course, there's a gong missing, but we don't use it that much. So, um, but it does have the symphonic chimes. And uh, so, anyway, we were talking about putting another drum set together because I've never had to this day. You know, I have some 11, 12 drum sets and. Uh, each one of them has always had the double pedal, but it's never been double bass. This is the actual first set that I've ever played on that is single bass drums with single pedals. And uh, it's a different, altogether different way of playing and thinking. Of course, Neil being in Rush with all the drums and stuff and the cymbals, it's a whole mind-blowing experience once you're behind this kit. You know, it's, there's a lot, you know, that you have to do. There's a lot that you have to remember. So anyway, um, we're going to go through today, I'm going to talk about the different sizes of the toms and the bass drums and the snares and the timbales. Basically this set um, is identical to what I've been practicing on at uh, Brian's house. And what he's been doing was uh, he got on eBay and he looked for some used toma drums, of course with the mahogany finish. And uh, pretty much we we got everything. Uh, as close as we're going to get it. Now what we did was we wanted to go a little bit smaller with the sizes because this is the set that I'm going to be touring with when we're on the road and playing and stuff. So um, instead of going to two 24 inch bass drums I went with two 22 inch bass drums. Um, this tom here is a 12 inch tom and then a 13, 14, 16, 18 floor tom. Um, the snare drum's 14 by 5 and a quarter. Uh, the 6810 uh, concert toms. I didn't go with the 6810 12 because, again, it's one more drum, and since the 12's right here, it's not that big of a deal. So I decided to, I opted to have less drums only because that one drum is not going to make that big of a difference uh, when you're playing around with the drum set. Um, and the other thing, it's easier for me to carry around because it's one less drum. So everything else pretty much is to the, you know, to the T. The symbols are paragons. Now, this is the other thing I wanted to do with this drum set was I wanted to have yet the old school of way of setting it up and making it look like the old school Neil Peart set. But at the same time, I wanted to have some of the nice new things that he has on his previous or his or, uh, recent kit that he has right now. And that is the mallet cat. I wanted to have this because for one, I don't have to carry around symphonic chimes, which are about the, the weight of a piano carrying around, if you can imagine carrying a piano to a gig. I'm the one that is going to be carrying this stuff, so I have to make it easier for me, and of course it has to be easier to be able to set up, and timing wise, it has to be quicker. So with all this extra stuff that Neil has, obviously when he was playing, he had people helping him, and he, all he had to do was show up on stage and you know play the kit. I, on the other hand, don't have that nice uh, luxury of doing that. Uh, I'm the one that has to set up everything and make sure everything's tuned right, symbols are set up right, everything's got to be set up right. So in that respect, 
I wanted to use the mallet cat strictly for the symphonic chime sounds that will come from this as well as the bell parts and um, you know marimbas, xylophones, everything's on here and I like that feature of it so I opted to have that instead of the regular standard bells right here because uh, it will be again less, less to carry around. The other thing that I've added to the drum set for sound effects is the SPD SX by Roland. I'm going to be talking about that in the near future on one of my videos. I'll go into more in depth about what I'm using that for on this kit as well. Uh, there's going to be times where the guys playing the guitar, Brian uh, and Denny, the bass player and keyboard player who's doing the Getty, um, a lot of times they don't have the luxury of being able to do all the sound effects so I figured I would be able to do that if I was able to add those in. So there's different parts that we're going to be using to record right off of the CD some of the sound effects, some of the intros, some of the outros, different things are going to be programmed and sampled into that and then all I have to do is hit uh, a pad to trigger that sound which is really going to be nice and it adds a lot of nice features that you get you know you don't you don't realize they're they're there until they're gone and then you're like whoa you know I heard this band play with some rush tunes but there was a lot of things missing so we decided to opt for that way and uh, to do the sound effects with the pad um, again like I said I'll be going through that a little bit more in detail but we're going to talk about today again the different sizes of drums um, I'm going to talk about how to put this drum set together and so you guys if you you know, want to look on eBay, you're putting a set together and you want to do kind of the same thing. Um, it sounds like Neil Peart's set. The way I've got it tuned, I've set it up to sound like Neil Peart's set. I'm going to do a demonstration of that very soon. But in the meantime, like I said, I've set it up to sound like Neil Peart's kit. Um, I had to buy some things and Brian had to buy some things to get this kit together for me. And I really appreciate Brian doing this. But he wanted me to be able to practice on a kit like this so that when I'm coming to their practice, I have something very similar at home to practice on, so when I get to the, the practice with his kit, I'm pretty comfortable with it. When I first started playing with them, man, I was totally uncomfortable again, because I didn't have the double bass. I've never played on double bass, uh, you know, single pedals before, and I never played on a set this huge. I've always had just, you know, a five-piece kit, six-piece, maybe a seven at the most, um, so, you know, like I said, it's a totally different experience when you're behind this kit. Uh, there's more cowbells, obviously, um, need a little more cowbell, I know I'm going to hear all the jokes afterwards. But um, I've got the little small cowbell up top, and then the three tribells, and then the big kind of uh, Latin-y cowbell right there. So those are there, they're on a stand, I'm going to go through all of this. So let's do this right now and we'll, uh, we'll check this out. So let's do it. Okay, looking at the first part of the drum set obviously is the front of the drum set. It's got to look like Rush, so you got to have the Starman logo on the bass drum. Again, my good friend Brian was able to uh, take a drum head and we basically got the Remo uh, Emperor Clear. And he took these home and he found the label for the Starman logo. He went and bought two of those, one for each bass drum, and put the holes in, one on that side on the left, and the one on the right is on the right. And you can see the Starman's kind of has his left, left, left arm out with his back facing the left on this one. This is on the right side. And the left bass drum, he's basically the opposite of that. So that's how you want to have him set up uh, for all you Neil Peart uh, copycats like me. And uh, anyway, what he did was um, he spray painted these, I think, two different colors on his. Uh, he had he went up to the store and got some spray paint and got kind of this gold tone. One was lighter and one was darker to make this kind of really goldy kind of look to it because obviously our band name is Gold Rush. And uh, so that's what he wanted to do. So he ended up getting these stickers, which is the Starman logo stickers. You can get them in different colors, but they end up having uh, the black this one is black look to it and then he spray painted the head on the inside and had that kind of cover up the Starman logo and through, so from looking at the front of the head you can actually see uh, the, the logo popping out through the gold which is really ingenious 
Um, so that's how he did that. And again, he did this one as, as far as the right side. That's what that one looks like as well. He did an awesome job. It really looks professional. Uh, again, Brian is a master at doing this stuff. He's been doing it for quite a few years. And he also plays guitar, which is amazing. So uh, the next thing you want to add to your bass drums is these L-shaped brackets. As you can see, Neil had two of these. And the way they look is they mount on the rim and then the L shape comes all the way up into a full fledged cymbal stand. It's just a straight stand and it's got the uh, adjustment right there. You can adjust a little bit if you need to. And so this one um, holds the 16 inch crash and you can kind of see it's really close to the tom arm um, or I should say the tom arms and it just kind of fits in between there like that. And it's not touching the metal. I try to not touch the metal at all because otherwise you get rattling going on and you don't want that. Then on the right side bass drum, if you're looking at the set from the front, you have another one of the l shape brackets. Again, it mounts to the rim of the bass drum, comes up, and then it holds my 10-inch splash right here. And I'll kind of stand up so you can see it. And that's basically the way those two look. I'll get kind of an angled view here so you can kind of see the crashes. So that's the first look that you need to make your uh, Neo Peart kit. The other important thing is right here with this tom, the 12 inch tom right next to the hi-hat and as you can see right above it is the 10 inch concert tom. Uh, right here it's like an L shape, looks like a cowbell holder but it uh, holds the tom and it comes down to this little apparatus which again um, he had to drill two holes and then connect that little tom holder to that and then that brings it up to this and gets the tom over far enough to the other tom because if we just had if we just used this right here it would, it would run into the other tom so there's just no way of getting around that unless you have this kind of uh, apparatus right here so this is a different type of tom holder so look for that guys if you're trying to look for that same kind of thing I guess uh, there's different companies. This one doesn't say a company brand on it. The L-shaped brackets that I was showing you were actually made by Gibraltar, so you can get those from Gibraltar. This basically uh, looks kind of like a Ludwig, an old Ludwig-style Ludwig uh, tom mount. If you guys know what it is, you can help me out with the name. But anyway, that's what it looks like right there. All right. Okay, Let's and the next thing is the 6810 concert toms. Now, Neil, obviously, he had 681012. I opted to go one less size uh, because I already have a 12 inch and it's easier for me to carry three drums around as opposed to four uh, with this. So again basically this is just a regular Tom Tama uh, Tom holder and it's on a tripod stand as you can see right there and I have mounted another type of uh, multi clamp with a cymbal boom and I've got another 16 inch crash right there next to the three toms okay and then instead of having another stand for the six inch tom I opted for another multi clamp and went up with the tom single tom holder and that's holding the tom right there and also the has it has the cymbal stand connected right to it and that holds the 20 inch crash uh, again Sabian uh, Paragon so again, that's basically all it is, just that mount. Comes up, holds the 6-inch tom, and then the 8-inch and the 10-inch are all on this stand. Okay, and now we're behind the drum set. As you can see here, I have the LP uh, Timbalitos. Uh, they're like Neil's Timbales. He actually had, I think, a 13 and a 14, if I'm not mistaken. And I opted to go a little bit smaller and go with the 1012 and they sound really good. I like them because they're high pitched um, and I tried to make them sound different than the the uh, 6810 concert toms as you can see here. But uh, to my left a little bit more is the uh, chimes and of course you need those. I have those on this side and then as I get around the drum set you'll see the other set. Um, if you go right down here this is the uh, SPD-SX by Roland. It's a sampler uh, pad. 
there's actually nine pads, the three in the back there, and then there's uh, six on the actual unit uh, right below those. And I'm going to go through that in the weeks to come, so stay tuned for that. I'll do a really good overall view of it and demo it and show you all the bells and whistles on it. Okay, and from there we're going to move along to the Mallet Cat. This is the Mallet Cat KS7. It has the Kurtzwheel uh, sounds all built into it. And how I have it mounted um, basically is just a snare stand. Um, I could have went with the, the mounting brackets and everything, but uh, it wouldn't go low enough for the, the stands that they have available on the market. Um, the only thing that would go lower would be the snare stand. And it balances really well in the snare stand, so I just, like I said, I opted for a regular snare stand. Just a Gibraltar. Uh, pretty cheap, probably like 45 bucks, I think, for the stand, maybe 35 and down below, of course, the, uh, the sustain pedal and then the uh, program change pedal. It does other things as well. It can change the, uh, the octaves of uh, the mallet cat as well. In fact, I use it for that as well. Okay, and from there we're going to move on to the hi-hat. Now this is very important to be able to get it like the way Neil had it. As you can see, this is a Gibraltar hi-hat. They make other hi-hats like this as well. But this has no legs, as you can see. There's no legs to the hi hat. Uh, it just comes up. It's a, uh, just like a regular hi hat, but without legs. Come up here to the symbols, and what's really important is this pole right here. Now this pole was actually longer, and it would have came up to about where my finger is right here, and that would have been way in the way of the time. I just couldn't do that. So. I got myself a Dremel or you can use a saw or something like that and I had to saw that down just enough to where I had clearance between the tom and the top of that hi-hat pole. So that's important. You have to do that otherwise it's just going to be in the way. Because um, most of the stands that they have available on the market are pretty long. Uh, I know DW has one. They actually have two different sizes and I could have done that as well but I had the uh, the Gibraltar hi-hat so I'm using that one. Um, but here's the other important thing to uh, be able to get this. Since it doesn't have any legs you'll notice there's this bracket. Now this right here, this bracket actually has an L-shaped bracket right over here. I'll get down farther so you can see it. And it clamps to, again, to the bass drum rim. You can see right there. Um, let me move it around here. I'm pointing with a stick. You can see it clamps right here onto the rim of the bass drum and then this pole right here comes up, goes up and over and you attach the other bracket to the hi-hat and once you tighten this wing nut down and this wing nut down it's pretty well solid as a rock. It ain't gonna move. It's not gonna move anywhere. Okay. As you can see, I'll back up here so you can see. And it's connected right to it. Now the reason why you have to have that is because the hi-hat pedal is really close to each other with the left bass drum pedal. So that way I can get to and from it really quick. Uh, with the leg version of this, the hi-hat pedal would probably be somewhere over here in this direction. And you would have probably a good six to eight inches between the pedals and that's just not going to work. It's just, it's too much, too far apart. So that's very important. And I opted for the DW 5000s uh, just because I'm used to the, the DW pedals so I've, I went and bought those. And as we come up to the snare drum, this is actually a Ludwig snare. Now my uh, good buddy again Brian who has one of these on his Thomas set, his uh, Rush set at, at his house, when, the one I practice on, I really like the sound and it really kind of almost fit to the same sound as uh, Neil's old Slingerland. And I really like the way it sounded so I ended up having to get one of these as well. And uh, it's got like the uh, kind of the sparkle to it. Pretty uh, inexpensive snare drum too. And I put the uh, the CS black dot, the Remo CS black dot on there. Uh, by the way, the bass drum uh, heads, going back to those just for a second, I'm using the Aquarian Super Kick 2s. Uh, they were really punchy on, on Brian's kit, and I really liked the way they sounded, so we opted to get two of those for this as well. 
Okay, and so that's pretty much the uh, the bass drums in a nutshell. Like I said, uh, you need two single pedals. If you have a double pedal, some double pedals can be taken apart to make them two singles. So you may not have to go get two extra pedals, and that'll save you some money that way. Um, so let's go on to the toms next. As you can see right here, I have the 12-inch uh, tom, 13-inch tom, 14-inch, the 16-inch uh, floor tom, and the 18-inch. And they all have the Remo pinstripes, uh, just because they sound more like the way Neil's uh, heads were back in the day. And really like the way these sound. Again, I'm going to do a demo of those pretty soon. Okay. Got my stick bag down here. What drum set would uh, not be complete without a stick bag? You need all the all the Neil Peart sticks you can buy. Um, definitely going to need those. And let's go on to the cowbells next. Okay, as you can see right here, I have the top one, which is the standard classic cowbell from LP. And then I have the three tri-bells right here, and these are made by Pearl, by the way. And then I have the Latney cowbell, uh, I guess it's called like a salsa cowbell. Really big sound to it. And just above there, I have the six inch splash, as you can see right there. Okay, and then from there, we're gonna move on to the ride symbol. This is a 22 inch Paragon Sabian ride. Uh, it's a special type of cymbal stand. I actually have a 18 inch on top of the 22 inch. So it's a regular, it's almost like a boom, but yet it has another a felt washer. I'm gonna go underneath so you can see. It's got a felt washer there, and it houses the felt washer and another washer to uh, connect the ride cymbal and let the ride cymbal rest on that and then the bar comes up and it's just enough clearance as you can see uh, between the hole for that and it comes right up and it uh, connects to the 18 inch crash on top of that so that was pretty ingenious again Neil's been doing that for quite a few years and uh, like I said it's uh, real easy to get to the crash symbol from there there's an 18 inch right above the cowbells and then I've got the ride symbol right there. And to the right of that is a 20 inch China. And I think he has one more China, but I opted again for going for less. And just the one China for right now is really fine. Uh, if I ever need another one, like a different sounding China, um, of course I could get one of those. Um, I know they make a special uh, Sabian, Sabian Paragon uh, China as well for that. This is actually a 20 inch Wuhan again because I'm going old and new uh, type of set. So Neil used to use Wuhan Chinas all the time back in the day and that's why I opted to put this one here instead of going get Paragon uh, a Paragon one and since I already had this it was easy easy choice for me. Uh, up from there I have the temple blocks. Now I could have went with again the the more traditional style uh, temple blocks and they're round and they sometimes they're red or they're orange uh, they have different colors to them but these sound just pretty much as close as you're going to get to the real thing and again they're real easy to uh, put together and you know they'll be real easy to move in and out of uh, gigs and stuff like that and then again above there uh, my other set of chimes like I said these are the right hand side ones and I think he does have one more set of chimes again, but I'm going to leave those out again for something extra so I don't have to carry an extra thing. Again, I'm trying to make this kit as light as possible, which is really going to be helpful in those nights where I'm playing and we're, you know, we get done playing and I'm pretty much worn out and I need to uh, just basically, you know, put everything away real quick and get out of there and get home and go to sleep <laughs> so I don't want to be sticking around for hours on end trying to put everything away I mean it's great it looks nice and everything but in the you know in the grand scheme of things it's just it's going to be easier for me to carry around I'm not getting any younger so I want to make things as easy as possible so this is pretty much the set uh, in a nutshell like I said if you guys have any questions about it I'm going to do a little demonstration of the sound of the kit right now 
So we're going to do that. We're going to jump to that in just a minute. But I'll figure I'll go through it one more time here and show everything. And there's that. Again, really ingenious, these two uh, holders here, one for the hi-hat, one for the tom. Um, like I said, if you have questions about that, feel free. I think pretty much both of these you can find on uh, Musician's Friend or possibly at your local guitar center or music shop. And um, that's pretty much it. All right, let's get back to uh, rocking out on the set. And till then, you guys take care, keep rocking. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.